Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golan. We're back in Foundry VTT and we're looking again at our Curse of Strahd campaign. Um, so first of all, um, I had recorded this video previously and had a bit of a problem. <laughs> it didn't record very well and it ruined a lot of the footage. I have no idea what went wrong. But it has saved you from watching me do an awful lot of walls. Um, so I'm just going to bring you up to speed with what I've done and where we are with it. I didn't want to start the whole thing again because um, it took quite a while. Okay, so uh, module management wise, I've got this up for a reason because we've added a couple of additional modules on to our Curse of Strahd campaign. I've added on wall height that we've previously looked at and levels. So we did a video looking at Ripper's levels um, module and Ripper's wall height module uh, and just had a little play with those but we've not actually used them in an adventure yet so this is a really good opportunity to do it. Now our Curse of Strahd is mostly theatre of the mind stuff we've got our um, mysterious visitors we've got the Svalich Road and of course we've got that landing page but I thought for the death house which is multi-level house it would be nice if the characters can actually walk around and explore that themselves it's relatively contained yes there's a bit of combat in there so we can do that a little bit more battle mappy even though there's not that much but I still want to try and keep that feeling of the um, of the theatre of the mind sort of idea um, but using a battle map as well, which is a bit weird because we're kind of like mixing those sort of two. And yes, I know if we're using a battle map, we're calling it Theatre of the Mind is probably not correct. But I want to keep it really atmospheric. Okay, so I've got those bits installed. Um, so I've used the level module and I've created, I did walk through this. They, again, there's a video on levels, so um, I've shown you how to do it. Um, and I just walked through and I've created the ground floor, first floor, second floor and the attic. Uh, for you Americans out there, sorry, us Brits use ground floor, first floor, second floor, attic. You're probably using first, second, third floor and attic. Um, <laughs> apologies, just going to be confusing. So I've set each of these at 10 foot. So the ground floor is from 0 to 10 foot, first floor 10 to 20. Um, in the module, there's a bit of variation between those heights. Um, I wasn't worried about that. I can describe those differences in heights. It's not going to make an awful lot of difference mechanically for us. Uh, and I didn't want to go and confuse myself by having things at different heights. Um, and so I've stuck to them being um, divisions of 10 here. OK, so what did I do? Um, obviously, I first of all went in and created using Ripper's Levels module our four different levels here. Um, so we've got uh, our ground floor, our first floor, our second floor and our attic. So I've put those in. Now I've just used uh, almost kind of any image really for the map image. Uh, but my ground floor is a tile. So if I go on to the left hand side and go to my tiles here. Go on, there it is a second uh, you can see I've got a whole bunch of tiles uploaded uh, not in that one it is in this one if I go to here da, 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 da. I've got the death house ground floor and then I've got the first floor here the others are in here I promise uh, oh, first floor again second floor uh, the attic etc uh, so all I've done is on each of those appropriate levels is I've dragged that tile over. Now, very fortunately, or not fortunately, uh, by design, by the clever person who did these, um, they're all the right size to go with each other. So they stack up really, really nicely. So that's just a tile on top of a tile, on top of a tile, on top of a tile, but each of them on a different layer of Ripper's uh, levels uh, module. OK, hope that makes sense. So we go to the ground floor. What I did is, that you've missed out on, the, the exciting bit, the best bit that you've missed out on is I put all the walls in. <laughs> now you've seen me do that before in other videos. Um, if you're not too sure and you haven't done walls before and you're like, well, hang on a minute, what did you do there? You can go back and um, look at the Stormwreck Isle one right at the very beginning. We looked really, really early on when I first started doing these videos at putting walls in. Um, or you can go and look at the add-on video where we did wall height, um, where we did walls again, and that will help you understand what all these numbers are on here, which is basically just saying the top of the wall is at 10 foot, the bottom of the wall is at 0 feet. 
So for the ground floor, this is a wall on the ground floor, but that wall doesn't exist up here on the first floor. Yeah, so the walls are related to the level of the house you're on, which of course is what you want. So that's a combination of wall height and levels, both by Ripper, that enable us to do this. So that was what I did for a majority of this video, is put those in, um, putting in some doors and things. So the whole of the ground floor was done. Uh, the first floor went and did that as well. I know, you missed out on all this excitement. So we went through and did all of that for the ground floor and for the second floor uh, and for the attic as well. Uh, now, bearing in mind, there's a couple of bits that are worth mentioning that I kind of went over as I did it. Um, this is an outside little area. You can step out here onto this little platform. Uh, these are railings. If I turn that off, we've got railings around this area. So they're not full height walls. What I did, um, give me my walls, thank you, is I made the top of these walls at 24. So I've made these four foot high, and that might seem extreme. Um, it might be, whatever. But they're not full height walls, so they can still, well, at least six foot characters can still look over those without any drama at all. So it's a little outdoor area. And there's another one over here I did the same. So there's basically a railing, and if you're tall enough, you can just look out over it um, without too much drama at all. And then when we go to the attic, we can see that we've got this area here I haven't walled this off because this is actually the tile below okay so but we can still see it and the same with up here this is area here is actually the area below but any character who is on the attic level who can see out this way would be able to see anybody on the second floor who's here if that makes sense should do hopefully that's quite clear okay so we did all that now what you will notice of course it's quite dark um, so I have under my lighting controls, I have set this to transition to darkness um, for testing. But of course, it does very much depend on um, when the characters get here. Uh, you know, <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> this is Ravenloft. Um, so they are not going to necessarily have this beautiful weather that we've got going on here, nice and crisp and clear. Um, I did throw some lights in, so we know that we. So we've actually got some. Um, lighting hang on let's uh let me grab let me grab Haley here on the ground floor so we've got some lighting at the moment but of course we're going to add weather effects what i didn't want to do is go and add in lots of fog and weather effects right now while we're building it because it's going to get in the way and also we need to bear in mind that if we put fog on it will fog the whole map including inside the house until foundry version 12 comes out which in which allows us to compartmentalize our weather effects it's going to affect everything so uh, there might be a different way to do that such as fog effect on a tile and just drawing tiles around the house to do that not too sure um, but um, yeah so we've got basically uh, a dark place here and Haley can go in and wander through so yeah, you can see she's wandering in, but she gets to a point where she runs out of light because it's what's pouring in through the outside here. So in fact, actually, if we close this door, Ailey's now stuck and she can't see the doors. <laughs> she can't get out. <laughs> so uh, as a DM, obviously, I can just drag her wherever I like. Okay, so that's what we did. So we, we set those tiles up. We've got them all st stacked on top of each other correctly. Um, We've put all the walls in. We've not done any um, any real lights. Um, I probably will turn the lights down again for doing the rest of it, um, just to make sure we're getting the right kind of atmosphere. But you'll notice that there is lots of places on this map where there are, perhaps I won't turn it down, um, where there are lamps in the building. Now it says in the adventure that they're, all of them are off, but they can be lit. So they just, you know, they've got oil, they just need to light them. So we're gonna put in lots of lights here that are going to be turned off let me show you what i mean we're going to create a light like this and we're going to turn it off um literally that simple but we'll do that all as one thing when we're doing kind of the atmospherics and trying to get this working um we're going to put those in as for work out exactly what our, we want our lamps to look like and then replicate them so they're all kind of the same but i don't really want to do that until i've had another look at the module and made sure i'm really clear on some of the some of the atmospheric stuff that's going on in some of these rooms i want to make sure that that is correct uh, one other thing to note is um, there's a dumb waiter here 
Um, so when I did this, I've walled around this dumb waiter. So any character standing in this area in this kitchen can see the dumb waiter in the corner. Uh, same because it's on the first floor and it's on the third floor, um, but it's not in the attic. So uh, it just means that they can see that a bit clearer. All right. So I mean, you know, if you've if you have been watching those other videos on levels, uh, wall height, um, and things, then hopefully you kind of like, yeah, yeah, we know what you're on about. You've done all this. That's great. Uh, if you haven't, I will leave a link in the description or um, just to take you to uh, the wall height and the levels mod that we looked at, just so you can see how this has been built. Um, it's really, really easy. It, it's so good. What I've not done is put in any transitions between the levels or anything like that yet. Um, but I'll be doing those in the next video where hopefully we'll get the lighting. We'll look at lighting at one of the videos. It's going to take a few videos to get this one right. We'll take a look at the lighting. We've got to move between them. And of course, we need to put in some encounters. Now, the other thing I'm looking at doing um, just um, to create some atmospherics is I have, uh, if I can find it, um, give you one second because of course it's uh, decided to move my stuff for me as it does if we uh, if we have a little look over here we've got some lovely images for things like the ballroom and things like that so what I'm thinking about to doing um, and it'd be really interesting to know your comments is as the characters move around and they get to a point where one of those images is appropriate putting an active trial trigger that will pause the game so stop people running around the house willy-nilly and it'll pause the game and reveal one of those kind of images which gives me the opportunity to describe what that room is and give some atmosphere and stuff before they move on i'm always slightly concerned about characters um, just running off <laughs> just running off and doing their own thing and just you know just like we've got the whole house woo -hoo! and off they go and as a dm you struggle to keep up so um i will be putting some stuff in place to make sure that doesn't happen uh, generally my players are really good but you know there's a you sometimes you get one who just makes a beeline for the kitchen or something like that and and you you know you're desperately trying to whack the space bar to pause the game and stop them doing it Shall I stop rambling on? I will. Um, as always, if you've got any suggestions, things that you think we could try with this and the way we could do this that you think might work, leave them in the comments. Always helps. Any comments is a good comment. Uh, leave a like. That would be appreciated. And of course, if you're not subscribed, please do that. And if you hit the bell icon, it means you will be reminded when the next video is released uh, so you can follow on this journey. Thank you for watching. Do appreciate it. You take care.